Hey YouTubers, thanks for joining in. This week we've got an interesting question for you. Justin, since you're the one who's taken most of the heat. <laughs> taking all the heat about this, You've been enough. taking a lot of heat on our Facebook, our, our private page for Bow Hunter Die. And in our go forum ahead, too. Go and ahead and forum. go ahead and pose the question for our YouTube fans and right. we'll see what they have to say. We want to know what you guys think is the maximum ethical range to shoot at a white-tailed deer Keyword. with archery equipment. I personally believe 40 yards is the limit. I think there's no reason that we should be shooting over that. I don't care how good of an archer you are. We bow hunt to get close to our quarry. And over 40 yards, it's just too much of a crapshoot. So that's what I believe. A lot of people like to disagree with me. So we want to hear your comments below. What do you think? What's, he, what's your maximum range? You're shooting well, you know me. at I, a whitetail. I, you, I would rather put all the effort into figuring out as close, to, I, I'd rather be 10, 15 yards. Well, I, we would all rather that, but I, we'll I know, answer but I, the question. Todd Graff's line in the sand, I won't yards. shoot past 20, 25, 25 yards. yards. That's pretty aggressive. 25 yards. I say 40, that. but man, 40's a poke. It Every, is a poke. And everybody's out there saying they're shooting them at 50 and 60. Pff, you guys are nuts, I think. So guys, <laughs> leave your comments below and uh, let's get into the show now. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bowhunter Die. I think before we dive into this episode, Justin, there's been an awful lot of comments on the recent Facebook private group that we have for Bowhunter Die with. I feel like Kim Kardashian, I broke the internet. You? Right now. I you, broke the Bowhunter Die group. There are definitely some people that have some problems with it. <laughs> people, are, people are very <laughs> angry. I posted this meme, which we'll show you right now, which I thought was kind of funny, personally. But it was also trying to make a bigger point that I've been trying to, to make for a while now, which is I personally believe that long distance shots at white tailed deer should not be taken. And I define long distance as over 40 yards. Some people agree with me, some people disagree with me. That's my stance. And there's been some heated conversation in the, the bow hunter die group. There has definitely been a lot of heated conversation. And I think, you know, Justin, to talk about this in a little bit further because I mean I think people want to hear you know a little bit more than just that right I mean sure. we've been doing this now together for you know, 13 14 15 years and I think one of the advantages that we have is we've seen so many different angles video footage slow motion long distance shots that just they don't end well I mean most of the time and those are the sure. ones that the people show us and actually and we know, and about. We know yeah, about right and for me personally people have always give me a hard time because it's like I, listen, I got into bow hunting because I started off as a rifle hunting. I love my rifle hunting. I don't do it much anymore. But as a bow hunter, the whole point is, I don't know, to get close. And sure, I'm not I mean, trying to make up for the fact that I am not the best shot in the world. And I'll admit, I'm not the best, you know, long distance bow shot sure. in the world. But for me, it's like getting close to the animal. That's why I bow hunt. That's the challenge, right? Yeah, to and, me, it and is. I feel like, to a certain degree, we've replaced our uh, desire to be better hunters and get closer to our, our animals with just getting better at being archers and then just shooting them in farther distances, which to me takes away a lot of the challenge. But my main point that I'm trying to make that a lot of people keep <laughs> getting confused here is that the reaction time of a white-tailed deer when you shoot it with a bow and arrow is so fast and they can move so much in the span of even 40 yards is pushing it. You start looking at 50, 60, and 70 yards, and there's no guarantee that that animal and that target that you're shooting at is going to be anywhere near where your arrow is going to impact. It has I no agree. bearing whatsoever on how accurate a person is, what their confidence level is, what their skills or abilities are. You could be the greatest archer in the world, but when you, that arrow is in the air and that deer is ducking and turning and getting out of dodge, you can't control that. It's completely unpredictable, and I think there's a point of diminishing returns. For me, my line is 40 yards. I really like to say 25 and in is really my preferred, or like 15. Um, but if you guys haven't seen the post or joined in on the conversation, okay. we welcome all points of view, except for the guy that told me I was no better than PETA 
and I'm an <laughs> anti-hunter, and my head's up my you-know-what. So All right, we're, we're going to move on. So make sure you jump onto that group. Uh, we will get you joined in, and we will hear your comments. Yes, definitely. So, guys, we've got three off-season updates for you. It is July, Velvet Bucks. Deer are growing. We are starting to get those hit lists together. So we're going to check in with John Herman, Matt Miller, and Dan Richardson for some off-season updates. So let's stop talking. Let's jump into that now. Hey guys, Johnny Herman here. I'm up in uh, Atacokan, Ontario. I'm going to give you my hit list today, but uh, first thing I want to say is anybody that loves fishing, if you uh, haven't come up to Canada fishing, I'm telling you, it is crazy, crazy fun up here. We've had an awesome week. It's been sunny. It's been hot. The fishing's been really, really good. We're catching lake trout today, and uh, anybody caught a lake trout on uh, late action gear, it's just nuts. We're throwing plastics and jigs and we've already caught, I don't know, a dozen fish already this morning. I'm going to give you my hit list this morning. 7 a.m. Me and my brother Rick have been out here uh, since, oh, what was it, 4.30, something like that. Um, we're, uh, we're jigging lake trout. we got a nice sand flat bay in here. We've been catching trout in here all week and uh, this is going to be trout number 13 for the morning for us. Um, but anyways, I'm going to give you guys my hit list today. I'm not going to talk specifically about uh, individual bucks, but I'm just going to kind of talk in general about the two areas that I got to hunt. Uh, one being northern Wisconsin and then down in uh, Fulton and Knox County, Illinois. Uh, we had a rough, rough winter uh, up in northern Wisconsin, but uh, I run cameras all winter long, so I, I, uh, I know what makes it through gun season. I just don't know what makes it uh, past the wolves up in northern Wisconsin. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll just I'll just talk while I'm fighting this laker here. But um, all of the bucks that I had up in in uh, Wisconsin last year made it made it through, except for Boo. He got shot during gun season, and Lucifer never showed up last year, so he might have been wolf bait the previous winter. But uh, depending on how many made it through past the wolves this, this year, we should have our, our normal five or six hit list bucks up there in uh, northern Wisconsin. Um, what I'm really looking forward to is, is uh, the bucks I'm going to have down in Illinois. Um, I'm just going to flash you some pictures of these deer. I run cameras all winter long down there as well. And uh, uh, as far as I know, none of the hit list bucks that I had last year got shot. Boy, this is a big trail, Rick. All right, this guy. Wow. That thing is heavy. Yeah, that's a nice fish right here. So this is what we've been catching up here in Atacokan, Ontario. We're at uh, Clearwater West Lake. Um, just having a ball up here. Um, I'm gonna get this guy back in the water. That was a long fight. But, uh, wow, crazy good. Crazy good. Born free. All right, let's. Uh, <laughs> that was. That's an interesting hit list right there. But let me just finish up with saying I'm really, really gonna be looking forward to fall this year. You know, I've been uh, working on my um, target panic issue since last fall. Basically, I had a rough year last year. Um, didn't shoot well at all, as you guys saw. Um, had some some people reach out to me and have been helping me through the winter and, and this spring and, and summer. Frank McDonough out in Pennsylvania has been coaching me. He's been um, a lifesaver for sure. Um, all the people at Lancaster Archery have been helping me. PJ reached out to me. Um, you know, you're not alone if you're, if you're struggling with target panic and hopefully um, some of the things that we've been showing you on the show uh, are going to help you guys um, work your way through it like I'm working my way through it. But uh, like I said, I'm going to have some great bucks to hunt. Uh, you guys saw some of the pictures that we've shown you. Um, so 
yeah, I'm just uh, looking forward to this fall. Hopefully I can uh, put down a couple of uh, good bucks with a couple of good shots and uh, bring, it, bring it all to you guys on film. So. Okay, June 26th, I'm here in southern Indiana. As you can see behind me, this is supposed to be a crop field by now. It's nothing but weeds. The farmers can't get anything in the ground right now. We've had so much rain. It's just got everything just soaked. It never dries up enough where they can come out here and do anything. At one time, they actually had it sprayed and uh, was getting ready to plant it, and then all the rain came back again. Thunderstorms in the forecast right now. I was going to run out and get my minerals in the ground and get them replenished again. But I'm afraid if I get out there, I'm going to get caught by a storm. So I think I'll wait till tomorrow. But uh, it's kind of holding me back. I uh, did have one round of minerals in already, getting some really good pictures. One of my hit list bucks from two years ago that I wounded and didn't find, he's actually showed up again first time since then. So I'm really happy about that. You'll see pics of him. There's thunder in the background right now. No way I'm getting minerals in the ground. So right now, all I'm going to do is grab the UTV get them loaded up and hopefully when I get home from work tomorrow we can get them in the ground. Okay, finally I get a little bit of break in the rain so I'm headed that way. I'm going to try to get these minerals out. It is clouding up a little bit again but I think the chances of rain are slow so I remember to grab my weed eater. we got some trimming to do. Here we go. back here uh, two things my mineral station they've pulled on it so much over the last couple years it got a low spot so now every time it rains it holds water it's no big deal um, they like water too so I'm just gonna probably put the minerals right in with it eventually that'll settle in and it'll be okay second thing back here where I got my camera we've had so much rain this year the weeds have came up so much when I get pictures I can't even see my minerals on the pictures so you just see deer back here, it looks like they're feeding on something. I like to include both of those in a picture. It makes for a really cool picture. So what I've done, I brought the weed eater back here. I normally don't have to trim this, but this year I do. I'm gonna knock all this weeds down between uh, me and the camera so we can get some better pictures. Man, I'll tell you what. It's getting hot. Now I got all the weeds knocked down. I got my place ready to go. Heartland Wildlife Lick Magic Mineral. Just like it says right there, the deer crave it. And they do. When I put this stuff out, they find it. They just tear it up. As you can see how the ground's all pulled up out here. Uh, I've already put it out once earlier this year. They've already went through it. I'll put this out. I've got another feeder over here with corn in it. Just for another uh, supplement. So trying to keep the herd healthy uh, it's great for does fawns bucks great for every aspect of their development makes for a healthy herd if you don't put them out you really should uh, the deer will appreciate it okay mineral site number two this one probably looks familiar to everybody this is where I get all the pictures of poser every year he comes in here and he teases me throughout mineral season, then he disappears and nowhere to be found. So I've never seen the buck in daylight. Uh, been after him for several years. Uh, I thought he was dead after the season last year. Somebody sent me a picture, we thought it was him. But after talking to another buddy of mine that had some pictures of him, uh, we're pretty sure that it wasn't. So I'm gonna get me a spot established here again, get it replenished. You can see where the old one's been a couple years in a row. Get me a camera set up over here again. And uh, hopefully that buck will be around still. So if he is, he'll definitely be on my hit list. Maybe think of some more options of how I might be able to find that buck. So big area out here. Okay, there you have it. Two mineral sites out. Got this one replenished. Hopefully my buck called Poser will come back again. That'd be a welcome sight to see. Got my game cameras set out. Um, 
I don't know, just one of those things I like to do every year. The deer appreciate it, and it's just really good for them. I like to locate mine close to water sources. I've got a nice little creek running through over here, but uh, it's just nice to have water source by other minerals. That way they can eat, drink, and be happy. So anyway, I hope to get some more game camera pictures to show you here pretty soon. But until then, bow hunter die. To be proven is a blessing. It takes faith. It takes devotion. It's never taking a single moment for granted. It takes heart. It takes passion. It's understanding that the hunt is bigger than us. We are proven. We are deadly. We are Sandlock. All right, guys, it's Monday, June 25th. Uh, we're gonna go mow some clover behind the house tonight and I'm gonna bring my partner in crime, Little Matt. And uh, while we're doing it tonight, we're gonna give you a quick tour of our house property, which you guys haven't seen yet. But uh, long story short, my wife Lisa and I bought this place about two and a half years ago. Uh, we've got just a very small piece of property. It's between six and seven acres. But we're very fortunate to have a bunch of deer here and able to hunt it and share it with our family. And uh, we'll give you guys a good glimpse of it tonight. So what do you want to tell them? Bow hunter die. All right, stick with us. All right, bub, start the tractor. Go ahead. Give it some gas. All right guys, so little Matt and I are back here in what we call the backyard food plot. And uh, I mentioned before, this place is literally, it's about six acres, um, but very fortunate to have this place. And also the neighbor has given me access and full control of their six acres as well. So combined, we've got about 12 acres. And I'd say probably, you know, out of that 12, 12 acres, probably eight or nine of it is all wooded and timber. And uh, the backyard here that we're sitting in right now, we actually turned the back half of the yard into a Heartland Clover plot. And we've had just a tremendous amount of deer in here over the past couple of years. Um, the front of the plot we've screened off this year with sunflowers just to make the deer feel a little bit more secure in here. But we've got deer coming in here every night. Um, I actually took a, a nice doe out of here the first fall that we had the property. And uh, we've actually gotten trail cam pictures of some pretty good bucks that tend to show up during the rot. Um, the strategy has always just been retain and hold all the does on the property, keep them here as close as we can. And uh, then, you know, come rut, we know that bucks will always generally show up and that's what's happened pretty much every year. So uh, we're gonna get this thing mowed right now. As you can see, again, it's Heartland's Top Seed Trophy Clover. The clover, if you look at it, you know, it's all in bloom right now. So right now is the time to get it mowed so that we can get all the weeds out of here. We keep it nice and flush, uh, nice and lush and, and fresh for the deer. Um, so we're gonna get after it before the mosquitoes get too bad. So stick with us. guys we're back here in what we call the back plot so this piece um, it's in the very far back northeast corner of the property and uh, we tend to hunt this thing with a predominant southwest wind I've got access from the neighbors piece just north of here so we can get in here clean but this is a piece that basically uh, you know this was all timber when we bought the property a couple years ago I came in here over a couple of winters with a chainsaw and then in the summer I'd come in with a stump grinder um, you know, but we just opened it up and as you can see, we've got it planted in Heartland's Top Seed Trophy Clover as well. And the deer have just been in here awful thick. Um, we've always had a lot of does and fawns in here all year round. Last year I had probably a nice mid 140s eight pointer in here that was in here pretty consistently for about two weeks. Um, I was not able to connect the dots on him, but you know, we were on him pretty good and he kept showing up about 20 minutes after daylight for about two weeks straight and just wasn't able to get it done. And, the year before that, I actually shot a beautiful, probably 135 inch buck just off the corner of this plot. 
um, unfortunately hit the camera uh, with the bottom cam on my bow when I took a shot at him and uh, ended up hitting him a bit far back and was not able to recover the deer. But we consistently had good bucks in here during the rut and the strategy has just always been hold the does and the bucks will show up and it seems to keep working. So uh, with that said, the mosquitoes are terrible. We're running out of daylight, but we wanted to give you guys a quick update. You know, this place just goes to show guys, for those of you that don't have 100 acres, you know, sometimes it's just a little six acre piece like that. Do everything you can to hold deer on it. And good bucks are probably gonna show up if they're in the vicinity. And we've had that happen over and over here. And eventually, with any luck, hopefully we'll be able to show you guys some footage of killing a good buck in here this fall. So we're gonna get after it, get this mode so we can get out of here, get away from these bugs. But until next time, guys, what do you want to tell them? What do you say to the camera? Bow hunter die. That's right, bow hunter die. Thanks for watching, guys. You know, Justin, let's just get right to the point here with John's segment. What about that double drop time buck? I mean, you know what? There oh, wasn't I a lot. I thought you were going to say we need to go fishing in Ontario. <laughs> well, listen, I'm all about ready to go fishing. I mean, I have to admit, coming back from Colorado catching some trout definitely felt pretty darn good. But forget about trout. I don't care about fish. That drop time that he doesn't spend a lot of time talking about, dude, that looks like a beast. Monster, I hope that deer is still alive. Deer. I know from talking to Johnny last year, they thought that deer was young, like just by looking at the trail camera pictures. It was very small body, look maybe like a three-year-old. If that deer lived, mm. he'll be scary this year for sure. Johnny's got some nice bucks down there in Illinois, and you know, hopefully uh, he's overcome some of those shooting issues you know that he's been having the last couple of years we'll see how things kind of pan out <laughs> i don't know that double drop time buck coach steps out i think that can change some things up <laughs> <laughs> you should start off with the little ones first and let me and you go shoot his bigger ones oh, I don't know. at distances closer than 40. Yards, all right enough of that. all right so matt miller backyard food plots looking good yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think the key there is not so much about Matt Miller and his backyard, but anyone's backyard, right? I mean, for people that are fortunate to have a couple of acres, you know, again, you can do a lot of things, whether it's planting apple trees, putting in that nice little Heartland clover plot. I mean, you can always do something on your piece of property. If you live in the right state, you can do mineral sites. I mean, sure. there are so many little different things that you can do to attract deer to your property and hold them and keep them there, which ultimately can turn into creating a successful little spot. Yeah, there. and it's one of those things where if you've got a small piece of property, you're never gonna shoot a bunch of deer off of it, right? And you might not have a lot of deer living on it, but like in Matt's case, he's got enough doe groups in the area that when the rut is kicking, there are some good bucks that cruise through that will give him an opportunity maybe every year to yeah. try to shoot one of them. You know, and that's really all you can ask for on some of those those smaller pieces. Uh, so, you know, looking forward to seeing, you know, what shows up at Matt's house this year. And then last but not least, we had Dan Richardson, who I know after he got done filming this and sending it in, did actually start getting trail camera pictures of that deer he's calling Poser cool. uh, for the third year in a row. But he's one of those deers, deers, one of those deer that comes during the summer months right and then kind of vanishes once the velvet comes off, which I think we've all had a few of those before. <laughs> a few? Yeah, well, so. I think the, the main discussion about this particular episode is, you know what, it is July right now, it is hot, but now is when the work really begins, right? I mean, you still have time to get food plots in the ground. Sure. There's the tree stand maintenance that needs to be done. I mean, I, I was, went out last night, I was mowing like at midnight last night. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. I just wanted to get as much done as I could, but I cannot believe with how much rain we've gotten. I mean, it's like a super jungle out there this oh, year. I mean, the insane. amount of trimming well, is going to be ara insane. Around here, the mosquitoes are so bad, you can't even walk in the woods and no. think about doing I went to move some trail cameras onto some bean fields the other night, and I literally had mosquitoes swarming me by the thousands. So <laughs> I'm, I'm done for a little while, at least locally. I'll go somewhere that doesn't have quite so many mosquitoes. So guys, uh, next up we've got a, a really, really good tip from PJ Riley over at Lancaster Archery about bear shaft tuning your bow. So let's check in with him now. If you're having problems with uh, fixed broadhead flight, uh, and it looks like your tuning is good, simply shooting a fletched arrow through paper, we're gonna show you how bear shaft tuning will help you fix problems. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna shoot a fletched field tip arrow and a bear shaft arrow through paper. Fletched arrow hold looked pretty good. A lot of bow hunters would just stick with that. The bear shaft showed the problem. Let's see what happens when we shoot downrange. That's when we're really gonna see the trouble.
My bear shaft is high and to the right of my fletched. I can guarantee a fixed blade broadhead would have done the same thing. So the adjustment is to move my rest. For your vertical adjustments, you're going to move the bear shaft to the fletched arrow. For your horizontal, you move the fletched arrow to the bear shaft. I have to move my rest down and I have to move my rest to the right. As you're making your left-right adjustments, if you find you're moving your rest and the arrows just aren't coming together, you could have a spine issue. Generally, the spine is too weak if the arrow keeps hitting to the right, too stiff if it's hitting to the left. I made my adjustments to the rest. My first arrow, my fletched arrow, is downrange there. Now I'm going to shoot the bear shaft, and if I made the adjustments properly, it should be right with my fletched arrow. All right, so that shot looked pretty good. My bear shaft is right with my fletched. Now, the ultimate, we're gonna shoot the broadhead, see where that hits, it should be dead on. Same spot. Hey guys, that's a great tip from PJ about you know bear shaft tuning your bow. And for you guys specifically that are shooting fixed blade broadheads, that's a huge time saver when it comes to actually knowing how and where to move your rest to get those two arrows to line up. So thanks to PJ for that great tip. Uh, Todd, it let's... May, it may be one of those tips you have to rewind and watch like three or four times. Before you fully understand. <laughs> well, yeah, right. because you've got to move one direction for the one you know, up and down versus left and right. right. So guys, next up, we're going to get into the trophy submissions for this week's show. So let's check those out now. Anthony Nelson. Chris West. Jaden Ryle, Kyle Parr, Lee Jester, and Vishan Washington. Hey guys, thanks again for sending in those photos. And of course, as always, we need to choose the winner of the Bowhunter Die and Pine Ridge package. And I think this week is pretty easy, Justin. I mean, I think we both agreed on this pretty one pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we agreed together that Anthony Elson takes the. Uh, takes the prize pack, so. Yes, he does. So congratulations to Anthony. Nice buck, nice photo. Make sure you email your information to info at bowhunting.com. Or you will not receive it. Yeah. I don't know how many times we... And our boy Brad here will get your Pine Ridge gear and your bowhunting.com, bowhunter die hat sent out to you. So guys, remember, if you want to see yourself right here, go to bowhunting.com, click on submit your trophy. You can send it that way, or you can post it on social media, hashtag bowhunter die. Todd, I think that's it for this week, man. Uh, yeah, I just it was so awesome checking my cameras last night, finding that spike and then seeing that coyote. With a fawn with in his mouth. With a fawn in his mouth. It was really, it was don't, don't feel bad. As I you would say, it was a riveting evening looking at those cameras. I only have two bucks on camera that I'm hoping might make 130 inches maybe by the time season rolls around. That's, that's literally all I've got right now. It's early. It's fine. It's going to be okay. It's okay. I'm not worried about it. Whatever is going to be there is going to be there, and whatever is not is not. There's nothing I can do. No amount of cameras is going to change it, so I'm just hoping that a big one shows up <laughs> come October. So, guys, that's all we've got for this week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you right here on Bowhunter Die in two weeks. For more exciting action, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and receive live updates from our team members as well as the latest happenings in the bowhunting and archery world. Be sure to share your photos, stories, and experiences as well. And don't forget to pick up your official bowhunting.com and bowhunter die gear by visiting bowhunting.com forward slash gear. We have a full selection of hats, shirts, decals, wristbands, and much more. <sighs> Action. Let's do this. <laughs> I have no muscle, that's why I can't fill it. You know, Justin, I, I gotta. After watching Johnny Herman's little skid there, right? His what? Skid. His skid? <laughs> skid? I don't know. What would you call that? I don't know. Segment? Segment. You ready? After his skid, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. People call him Hermie. Hermie? Hermie. Hermie.